Welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Vortex Part 4. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to use Vortex to manage your load order. But I'm also going to be discussing what on earth a load order is. This video is pretty specific to Bethesda Game Studios games or games that use their engines. So, for example, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Skyrim, Fallout 4, etc. Now, that may only account for 7 out of the 526 games that are supported by Nexus. However, those 7 games all appeared in the top 10 games and account for about half of the files uploaded. So, this is a pretty big subject. It's something that is going to affect a lot of people using Vortex. Now, I am going to talk about some of the basics involved with plugins, master files, and load orders. If you already know this stuff and you just want to get to the bit about manipulating your load order, please check the description down below. There will be timestamps for all the different sections. Now, to manage your load order using Vortex, you're going to need to go to the plugin section. And in here, you will find up to three different types of files. The first type are the ESM files. These are the master files that usually come with the game itself or the DLC that you've bought. You may also see ESL files, and these are light master files. And usually, these are things that come with things you've bought on the Creation Club. And finally, ESP files, which are the main plugins, and usually these come with the mods that you've downloaded and installed. If you've explored the plugin section of Vortex at all, I'm sure you've noticed that these data files can either be enabled or disabled. But occasionally, you will see some files that have no status and have a locked padlock icon. The reason for this is explained in a tooltip if you hover over the padlock icon. The fact is, these files are loaded by the engine and cannot be disabled or enabled. These are usually the add-on files that come with the game, the official DLC. Now, you can sometimes disable a mod simply by disabling its plugin, disabling the .esp file. However, until you really are comfortable with this process, I would recommend when you want to disable a mod, you disable it from the mod section. This is because mods often come with more than just one plugin file, and if you disable a single file, you may get some unintended consequences. That is not to say you won't enable and disable ESP files, but you should know what you're doing and you should have a reasonably good reason for doing so. If it's just to disable a mod entirely at this stage, I would recommend doing so from the mods panel. If you want a little more information regarding a data file, simply double click on it and it will open up a panel. If this file comes from a mod, you should be able to see the name of that mod and the author, along with some other useful information, including a list of the master files, the files that are required for this plugin to work correctly. Once this panel is open, you can just click on New ESP Files and it will update the information. If you want to close it, simply double click once more. One thing that could be a little confusing to a beginner is the way we use the word master. We actually use it to mean two different things. If you sort Vortex plugins by flags, you can actually see all of these files at the top have a star next to them. This indicates the game recognizes them as a master file. That is a file that is flagged as a master. Ordinarily, these will end with .esm. However, that is not always the case. As you can see, we have the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch .esp, and that is flagged as a master. But all six of these files are what we would call master files. However, when we say a file is the master of another file, what we mean is that file is required for the file to work. So, for example, if I double click on ELFX Enhancer.esp, it lists six masters. Now, five of these are actual master files, .esms, but one of them is a plugin, an ESP file, and it is not technically a master file. But we describe it as a master of ELFX Enhancer because it is required, i.e., this plugin will only work 
if this plugin is loaded first. This file is needed. It is a master of. I understand that is a little confusing. Uh, however, you will get used to it. Now, you might be wondering what would happen if the game tried to load a file such as elfxenhancer.esp and we were missing one of these files. For example, if enhancedlightsandfx.esp was not in the data folder, it had not been installed. Well, it can vary game to game, but generally speaking, if the file is not there, the game will crash when you run it. But what will happen if the file is there in the data folder, but is disabled? I'll disable it now. You can see with Vortex, I immediately get a warning telling me I'm missing a master. And if I select elfxenhancer.esp, it will actually highlight which file is missing. But what actually happens when you run the game will vary game to game. So for example, some games will just force the game to load any masters if it finds them. So it will, it will look for enhanced lights and fx.esp and even though it's disabled it will load it anyway some games will treat it as if the file was simply not there and once again crash however the most important thing is this is something that is not desirable if you're missing a master look for it in your load order and enable it or install it or fix the problem missing masters should be something you avoid what is a load order? You will hear this term quite a lot if you spend any amount of time in the modding community. And often it's used somewhat loosely to mean all of the mods that you happen to be using. That would be your load order. And if you add a new mod to your load order, it just means you're adding a new mod to your game. However, it does have a specific meaning, and that meaning is quite literally the order in which all of the data files are loaded. But why is that important? Why should you care what order the data files are loaded in? Well, to explain that, I'm going to give you a fairly simple example. Now, mods sometimes add new things, but they often change existing things. And I want you to imagine mod A, a mod that increases the damage on a certain sword by five. Now I want you to imagine another mod that changes the values on all weapons, including that sword. It's increased the value of that sword by 100 gold. The problem is both mods are changing the same thing and each mod will attempt to overwrite the existing data. This means whichever is loaded last will win. So if you load mod A last, you will get the extra damage. If you load mod B last, you will get the, the new value, but you won't get the extra damage. This is known as a conflict, and the winner of the conflict is the one that comes last in your load order. Now, not all conflicts have to end with a winner and a loser. You can actually use a patch, a, a patch for mod A and B, that merges the change of both mods. So you get the extra value and the extra damage on the sword. And as long as that patch comes below mod A and mod B, that patch will win and you will get both changes. The, the conflict has been resolved by a patch. However, there are plenty of times when this is either not possible or has not been done, and you will have to choose which of these mods wins. And that's why it's important to understand how to manage your load order. Vortex has a sort feature actually built in, and it will try to do the bulk of the work for you by essentially automating the sorting process. All you need to do is go along to the plugins panel on Vortex and click the Sort Now button. It will take a few seconds and then your load order is sorted. You even have the option to have auto sort. You can enable it or disable it by toggling this button here. And what this will do is auto sort your load order each time you activate a new mod. So you don't even need to remember to click this button. It actually uses the Loot API, and Loot is a very popular sorting tool that I've actually covered in another video. I will leave a link down below if you're interested in that. 
Now, in a perfect world, that would be it. You would now be ready to go. But this is not a perfect world, and I'm afraid you probably have to spend a little time just making sure Vortex has got things right. It does try to use the latest information from the community to figure out where it should place all your plugins. But, you know, we get changes to existing plugins, we get new plugins, and occasionally you might actually want something that's a little different to the rest of the community you do need to know how to manipulate your load order yourself. Now, the first and most important step to manipulating your load order is to actually understand the mods you're installing. You should always go along to the page you've downloaded the mod from and read the instructions uh, as carefully as you can, actually, especially the ones regarding installation. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using Modelute Ultimate because it does actually have some instructions regarding load order. As you can see here, it says load order. Place MLU.ESP below anything but mods that demand to be last. Now, I do have to tell you at this point that when you see advice like this, it is quite often because the mod author is being overly cautious. They do not know what mods you are using. They do not know if you are using the correct compatibility for the mods that you are using. And so they will tend to give you advice that airs on the side of caution that will work for as many people as possible. But please note, your load order is unique to you. And in this particular case, although my MLU.ESP file is fairly high up in my load order, it would not cause me any problems because of the compatibility patches that I'm using lower down in that load order. However, I am going to follow the mod author's advice for now, even though I don't technically need to, just to show you how the process works. Now, if you used an earlier version of Vortex, you may have used priorities to suggest to Vortex where a mod should be placed in your load order. But priorities have been replaced by something known as loot groups. But the basic principle is the same. Depending on the loot group your plugin belongs to, Vortex will try to move it up or down in your load order. As you can see, the MLU.ESP file is in the default group. If we scroll up to the top of the load order, we can see some other groups like early loaders or fixes and resources. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, we will find things like enhanced lighting, realistic water and dynamic LOD. To change the loot group a plugin belongs to, simply double click on the plugin and Hit this scroll down menu and change to whatever you want. I'm going to choose late loaders. This will generally try to push this plugin further down. I'm going to hit sort now. And now MLU has actually moved down. It's not totally at the bottom, but you can see it has now been moved down. And any files that need to be loaded after it have also been moved down as well. Notice that whilst this late loader now appears below a lot of the default loot grouped files, there are some that appear below it. And this is because they have rules, they have requirements, and they have dependencies that force those files to come even lower. Now, you can create your own loot group if you would like to. This is not something I would recommend unless you know exactly what you're doing and have a really good reason for doing that. But if you need to do this, it's actually pretty easy. Again, double click on the file and type in the name of the new group that you want. I'm going to make mine really, really late loaders. That will give me the option to create a group. I've now created this group and this file now belongs to that one. Of course, now we need to tell Vortex where files that are in this loot group should be placed. And to do that, we need to manage the groups. So go up to the top here and click manage groups and you will see all of the different groups along with connections that show you where they should appear in the load order. For example, the very first one up there is 
DLC and files in this loot group will tend to come before Creation Club files, which will come before Light Masters, and so on. The new group that I've added is the really, really late loader group. It comes after the default files. This is probably not that useful. So what I'm going to do is right click on this line and remove it. This group is now pretty much unattached and I'm going to make it so that it comes after the dynamic LOD group. This is the very last group. This is not something I would do. This should be the last group, but I'm going to do it just to show you how to do it. You uh, left click on the group that you want to go first and end on the group you want to come after it. In this case, the really, really late loader group. This is now in the rule set. Anything in this group will be placed after the dynamic LOD if there are no rules overriding that. So I'm going to click close and I'm now going to sort it. Notice where it is in the load order. It's in 90. I'm going to sort now and it is still in 90. And you might be thinking, why? Well, simply put, all of these files have some sort of rules or some sort of dependencies that mean they have to come after this file. This is something I'm not going to be able to fix by adding more groups. It's something I'm going to need to address deliberately if I want this file to go any lower. To be honest, I don't. In fact, I'm going to remove the group by going back to manage groups. I'm going to go to the really, really late loader group and I'm going to right click on it. It will give me the remove option. I left click there and it will disappear. If I go back, mlu.esp is now back in the default group. Of course, I could do the same and have the group appear right at the top. Again, it will still favor dependencies and requirements over these loot groups. This is obviously an easy and convenient way to manipulate your load order, but it does not give you the fine detailed control that you might need. For that, you're going to have to learn about dependencies. This file is a compatibility patch between Audio Overhaul Skyrim and Realistic Water 2, two mods that I actually really do like, but it's in the wrong place. It's supposed to appear below Audio Overhaul Skyrim.esp and Realistic Water 2.esp, but it only appears below one of them, that is Audio Overhaul Skyrim.esp, and that is because it has that file as a master file. Unfortunately, Vortex has placed it above realisticwater2.esp, and I need to move this. Now, I could use the loot groups the way I did to fix the last problem, and that would work, but it wouldn't be very specific, and it's not generally the best way to do things. If you know one file should appear below another, it's better to set up a specific rule. So how do we do that? Well, it is really easy. I'm going to double click here to close this. I'm going to go along to this icon and I'm going to click on it and hold and then drag down to realisticwater2.esp and release. This opens a pop-up that will let me set a new rule. I'm going to double check that the ESPs are correct. Audio overhaul Skyrim realistic water 2 patch.esp must load after. There are some other options, but I'm going to leave that for now. Realistic water 2.esp. This is all correct. I'm going to hit add, then close this, and then once again hit sort. And now Audio Overhaul Skyrim Realistic Water 2 Patch.esp is below Realistic Water 2.esp. You may also notice a few other files moving when you sort your load order again. Don't worry, this is perfectly normal. All of the rules and dependencies are still being met. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all we have time for in this video. In part five of this series, we're going to be discussing a related subject, mod dependencies, and how to handle the situation where two mods replace the same files. I would love it if you could join me for that video, and I look forward to seeing you there. But 
Until then, remember as always, have fun.